Welcome everyone to an episode of the Definitive Crusade. Yes, we have new sparkly intros. Yes, it's still the same old me. I'm joining the, the machine Hughes. Joining me as always is from across the big pond. We have Freya. How's it going? Hi. Good. It's going good. Cool. All good. No football season, so all good. And of yep. course, <laughs> we have Matthew. Matthew, uh, how's it going? I'm doing well, doing well. Yeah, I like you forgot. Uh, you, know, you forgot to put your emphasis on old uh, earlier, but <laughs> just wanted to point. Out. <laughs> well, well, in, in about a week's time, I think there's a, there's a gap opening up on old timers for, for, for a guest <laughs> shot. So I guess I won't be asking either of you two to join. So yeah, nah. Nah. <laughs> you two are out. There you go. Yeah. The I think I'm there. like the youngest one out. in this group. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, we'll see. Hey, just remember the old timers. You know what the line is: the whole side old, but the comics are. So you know, you know but still no. <laughs> That's what you get for insulting me all the time. <laughs> all right, okay. So uh, before we get into the books, um, there's been some more comic book news. Uh, unfortunately, um, as was expected, it has to be said. Uh, recently, yeah. we lost uh, George Perez. Um, an artist who is synonymous with loads and absolute loads of DC characters. In an honor, I'm wearing my Justice League George Press top. There you go. See, there you go. Mm -hmm. check it out. Cool. Um, George Press, what does he mean to you guys? Um, who did he create that you loved? Uh, Matthew, we'll start with you. Well, he was, he worked heavily on the, the Judas contract. Oh, he did, he, yeah. He worked heavily on the Judas contract, which is one of my favorite Teen Titans stories. Uh, just, just mm -hmm. because I've always, I, I personally love the character of Terra. Um, Ooh. And so, seeing as I know, I know, I know, it was a childhood crush thing, you know, as a little boy watching Teen Titans growing up, and then Terra was like, oh, but it is what it is. Uh, and of so, course. so seeing seeing his work through that. It's, it was it was really well really well done. Really okay, well, when we talk about the Judas contract, we also know a certain character made his first appearance there. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Boom! There we have it. Nightwing. There he is. Yeah, Nightwing. Yay! With his disco disco pants on. Check out that comment. <laughs> Wit. Oh, woo. Mm -hmm. um, where would we be? Where would the DC Universe be without Nightwing? Right. right. Yeah. He's, he's come a long way. I mean, if you look at uh, DC versus Vampires, he's kind of leading the whole uh, antagonistic party right now. Yeah, 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 he's doing all right. Doing all right. Freya, what about yourself? Who's kind of um, your your Perez memory? Of well, besides memory? Nightwing, I like the Starfire. <laughs> oh, yeah, Starfire. from the what was it? New New Teen Titans run that he yeah. did. That didn't yeah. do the stuff. I, yeah, cool. Yeah, so I, I like her with the big poofy hair and all of that. And honestly, because of how dated it is, Cyborg's outfit. Do you remember Cyborg's oh, outfit? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> all right, okay, cool. How about how about a little bit of this? Oh, yeah, and Raven Ooh, was great, too. Raven. Yeah, the, that's the original Raven look. Yeah, she was great. I, that whole team, honestly, with Beast Boy and all that, uh, that's yeah. that's my Titans. I love yeah. them. OG Titans, yep. OG, OG Titans, Titans, yeah. Cool. Um, I'm going to go a little bit out on a limb. I'm going to go with my favorite Perez moment would be uh, the reimaging of this character, which surprises mm -hmm. me. Because there's no fishnets, but hey, I still love this. You know, I mean, it's, it's you... thigh high. She's got the thigh high socks on. We know, we know about it. Yeah, <laughs> and if you look back at the Justice League Dark book um, in the New Fifty Two, it was this outfit that Satana was wearing, plus the the fishnets to give it that kind of whole um, standard look that we expect from the character, plus the thing. So. Um, mm -hmm. I love that look so much. I've actually got a figure. I've, there's a tenor figure that I own. Is the Justice League Dark, which pays homage to the Perez figure. So there you go. <sighs> um, so, um, sad loss, big loss for, for Comicdom. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to go and check out his work, you can find it in loads of places. Teen Titans, 
um, some Justice League around the 200s. I believe all the 200s, I should say. And that there's a Justice League versus the Avengers book, which mm-hmm. you can get. Um, so go and check that out. Um, for independence, you've got things like Saxon Violins from uh, Dark Horse, I think it was. Oh, sorry, Epic at the time. Um, it has been mm-hmm. printed as Dark Horse as well, if you want something. But bear in mind, you go around and check out Sex and Violins. It is, as the title suggests, a little bit more racier than you'd expect from a, from a, a Perez book. Yep. Cool. So thanks, George, and um, all the thoughts and, and well wishes are with your family. There you go. Right. Okay. On with the show. So we've threatened this book for quite some time we've seen the adverts for it and josh who has conveniently lost his voice i'm not buying that he's lost his voice at all yeah at all it's like he just doesn't want to talk about his pick because he picked this right so as i have had conversations via twitter with josh he knows what's in store for him later oh yes he does (laughs) just saying um we are going to talk about the Jurassic League. No yes. 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 Oh my God. <laughs> written, <laughs> written, <laughs> well, here we go. Oh. Written by Juan Gedeon and Daniel Warren Johnson with art by Juan Gedeon. Uh, colors by Mike Spicer. Uh, letters by Ferren Delgado. Well, I guess because Matthew seems to be espousing such joy at this book. Yes. Matthew, do you want to take this one away? I will go ahead and fire away at this one. So I, unlike Johnny, and I don't know, I don't know Freya's opinion on it yet. Uh, hmm. She's been kind of up in the air and just give me hmm, as the reaction for it, which gives me a good, <laughs> good indication. But said, off, so, oh my god, just, why did you read this? <laughs> <laughs> I love the Jurassic League just from going at the going at it with the point of view of its dinosaurs. And it was more than likely meant for the younger readers, right? Because this is definitely not a lighthearted book. Uh, it has moments in there. It's mo- It has moments in there that are kind of, you know, more along the gruesome side that we see, you know, like, uh, like Bruce a- getting eviscerated and he has blood and guts going out. It's 13, but, it's or Bruce, but cover. it... Well, I mean, it's 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 dinosaurs. It's still meant for okay fair enough, the fair younger. Enough, yeah. I know, I know, it's been a while since you've been thirteen, Johnny, but that is what we consider the younger readers. <laughs> but <laughs> as we can see, as we can see through here, uh, it does have a little bit of a dark and gruesome thing to it. Uh, for instance, this flesh tree that is holding all these dead humans. Mm. It's still, it's still got that typical DC dark feel to it, but it's dinosaurs. It's dinosaurs, um, which I personally love dinosaurs. I love me some dinos. Um, and the naming that they got for the characters for uh, for like the instant, if you go to the next page, uh, big reveal of the Batman characters, it's Joker's art. <laughs> And this is the point I checked it's, out. It's Joker's art. There's there's obviously a little bit of jesting going on here. Uh, Joker's art. What uh, I'm I'm I can't remember what Bruce's character is called. Or it's Batwalker. That's what it is. It's Batwalker. Um, then you have like a, a Superman is Superstar. Um, Wonder Woman is. Um, Oh, what is Wonder Woman's? I, I, I said I checked out. I was like, done. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, okay. We'll we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get there until that's, we get there. But as you can see, it, it it's got that little bit of dark. And here, uh, we see a boy, an orphaned boy, who has lost his family. And uh, as Batwalker's burning down the tree and stuff, he's telling him to go away. But the young lad doesn't want him to go away. And so we see what is kind of suggested at the Robin <laughs> of the group. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, at Trimascara or uh, Triceratops Themyscira. Uh, Wonder Dawn. Wonder Dawn. That's what it is. Wonder Dawn. 
See, because she's a triceradon. So she's a triceradon. It's, tri it's a triceratops. It should be wonder tops. No, no, triceradons is no. the overall inclusion of like the triceratops oh. species. Good. So, See, you have to be a nerd like me who loves the the dinosaurs to understand. Who the, died? The who died? Who died and invited Ross Geller on the show? Uh, George Perez. <laughs> oh, harsh. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> of course, no one's going to get the Ross Geller joke either, but you know, there you go. Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> as we, it's full of wonderful little puns, which I'm. At, uh, I, I love puns. I love puns. Uh, and so, like, Wonder Dawns and all the little twists on the names are really cute to me. Um, but there is no way around it. We have to go through it and roar. You know, <laughs> it's just the small little things. It makes me giggle. It makes me laugh. But still has the draw of, like, a DC book. Because as we can see, it has that little bit of dark edge to it. Uh, we see here superstar. Oh, we totally passed by the Aquaman. Or I saw you. I saw you go by. But There's a Aquaman, reason. Aquaman's in this as well. That's the one thing I didn't like about the book is the Black Manta artwork that they had for him. They could have done much better for the Black Manta artwork. It's the one thing he looks like a giant bug, like a like a fly, almost like a comic a comical fly. It. <laughs> Uh, I did. I did like the artwork for the Aquaman character. I don't think they actually give the Aqua character a name. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, I did like him because he gave me. Uh, well, of course, because he's a he's a sea hero, you know, sea creature vibes, and he uses all these all the sea creatures. <laughs> and the he punches the dolphin, and he's like Matilda. <laughs> that was. I just thought it was funny. I thought this book was very cute. Uh, for what it is, it's just. Can, so, so, can I just ask, nerd boy? Um, yes. Why is the dolphins in the Jurassic Age? Dolphins okay. have been around. For, dolphins have been around for a long time. I don't think they've been around since the Jurassic Age, but I know they've been around. And it may Are you not really trying to go historical accuracy with a dinosaur world where they're superheroes? Well, I'm just saying. Just saying. It's not our planet, Johnny. Maybe they had they dolphins may be, there. They, they may be <laughs> atheists. Hey, why are you picking? Why are you picking on me? I just asked the question because I can't. Uh, <laughs> it, also, we don't see the other two characters, but in the top right of this panel, we see the Flash character and the Green Lantern character. Uh, we don't exactly get to see what they are. I'm assuming that the uh, the Flash will be some kind of Velociraptor. The uh, Green Lantern looks to be a uh, Pachyosaurus. I could be wrong, but and then here we see the villains, the 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 second uh, set of villains in this, which is uh, Brontosaurus and Giganta, which is a Gigantosaurus and a Brontodon, but mastered the character. <laughs> It's silly. It's silly. It's silly, and I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I think I think this is one of my favorite books that have been released. i in a while. I know you guys have been dreading it, but I I liked it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Excellent. You know that's fine. Freya. Yeah. Whoa. Um. Let's <laughs> see. Colors so are nice. I had to. <laughs> I had to go into this uh, with the same thought process as going into like Captain Carrot World books, you know, because <laughs> yep. uh, it's going to be ridiculous um, because, I mean, they're dinosaurs, man. Come on. I, I, I So I went in with like, this is going to be ridiculous. And so I was actually, I had a good time because I went in with the right mindset. You're going like, this is going to be stupid and silly. And that's what you get. <laughs> So, like, it's stupid and silly, just like Captain Carrot, you know? And it, it, if you go in with that, you can't take this seriously. It's, I don't know, I early teens, I guess, would be okay with this. I don't know if my niece would be okay with this. She's kind of like an elementary school kid. Or, uh, Look, I, I don't know, know if this was handed to me when I was, like, a six-year-old. I would have been all over it. 
Yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it's a little gruesome. I mean, uh, uh, depends on like your parenting or whatever, but it, it is very much for the younger demographic. Um, and if you have kids who are obsessed with dinosaurs, then yeah, um, it would be great. Um, I did like the designs for everyone. It, it, um, I especially like the Superman design for so many I don't know. Um, it just kind of amuses me that they just painted an S on his chest and <laughs> called it good. Um, yeah, I liked it, honestly. Weirdly <sighs> enough, I did. But like I said, you have to go and go, and, this is going to be really dumb. And then you'll like it. <laughs> I went, well, I went in with the idea that it was going to be really dumb. And it was really dumb. And the only thing that I liked about it was when the uh, um, bat dinosaur describes the humans as small beasts. I was like, okay, that 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 took some while, but then Jokazar came on. I was like, you know what? We can't even get, <laughs> we cannot even get a Justice League book without Joker in it. I was very disappointed that we had Joker, but hopefully um, he doesn't pop up again because he's like, essentially dead. <laughs> so I get that it's supposed to be fun, and I, I get that it's supposed to be a laugh and stuff. But by the same token, I, can the can the heroes or villains versions of the dinosaurs not incorporate parts of the dinosaur name so it's bat walker well which which dinosaur is he supposed to be see that, that I'll, I'll admit I'm, I'm drawing a blank on what it's supposed to be joker's art what's he supposed to be just a big lizard yeah uh, yeah it, it it doesn't work you know it's like if you want to match them with with dinosaurs give them dinosaur and hero names don't just think, oh, I'll put the word bat in Joker in front of things and people will buy it. They won't. They won't buy it because you're just you're spoiling the 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 air of what you're trying to create. I could write a book and say, oh, it's going to be about this and put Joker in the front of it. And oh, look, it's a Joker character because it's got Joker on. It doesn't represent both worlds. If you're trying to do both worlds, do both worlds. Please. Good show. Good show. You know? yeah. But um i did I do, uh, I, I do like the designs of of the majority of the characters i yeah. agree with you uh matthew that the aquaman part is probably the weakest um the superman i did have a wry smile on my face because he's just so big and powerful i was like yeah that's that's cool and i absolutely fell in love with uh the dude that's going to be robin i mm -hmm. thought he was i thought he was class other than that i was like this book is you know i will not Unless one of you guys force me, uh, I will not be checking out the rest of this series. <laughs> guess what? We're going to. Uh, I will have to say, I'm going, I do I'm going, I'm going on vacation. I'm going on vacation soon. I'll let you know when that is. Then you can do okay. this book all you like. <laughs> yes. I love how, even though it's, you know, a dinosaur, somehow they still get the rugged, like, <laughs> square chin for Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bless him. I did bless appreciate him. his swearing in this, though. It, it oh. made me smile. <laughs> there you go. Well, because it, he, it's like he goes guano instead of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I was like, I like that. <laughs> oh. uh, what do I say next? Right. Okay. There you go. So, from one um, alternative DC universe, I guess to. Another, although I'm not sure if they've actually come out and said this is an alternative universe. Back in the day, it wasn't, but we'll go with it and see what happens. Uh, Frey, this is your choice, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And it is The Blood Syndicate, season one, number one. So this is written by Jeffrey Thorne, uh, with art by Chris Cross. His daddy will make you jump, jump, apparently. Inks, I'll let away with that one as well. Inks yep. by Juan Castro. Colors by Will Quintana and letters by And World Design. I thought it was quite a fun little joke, but never mind. Okay, Freya, save me and the world. <laughs> oh, I love bad jokes. Uh, so, honestly, I don't know why I picked this. I just kind of did. Uh <laughs> <laughs> ah, a true, a true Freya pick. Excellent. Yep. Put it on the wheel, let it spin, and whatever it lands on is what I go with. Um, so. Uh, I, higher. <laughs> yeah, I know I should. I like um, the parts where they're in the war. Yeah, what's a show? I like those parts. 
Wow. And then when, I mean, I guess uh, one of the guys, he's a, uh, he's left the military. He's done with his service. And so he's going home and they're, you know, having the chit chat and stuff. And uh, now he's talking about, you guys have superheroes. I'm like, well, if they had superheroes, you think they'd like send them mm-hmm. to the front lines to like help these guys. But now let's let, you know, let our soldiers die, I guess. But uh, it, it was, um, I don't know. I couldn't pick up on like, what their personalities are supposed to be because they were kind of all over the place. At least Carlos mm. was. Carlos's personality, I'm like, what is his per- like? Mm. I don't get what his personality is supposed to be. Is he supposed to be kind of like this tough guy? But then he like makes yeah. a comment. Then he makes a comment about like drowning in a chocolate waterfall, uh, and he's like doing the grr thing with his hands. I'm like, I cannot place this man's personality. Yeah. Now. So I was like, okay. Um, it was just, I guess it was supposed to introduce the characters because it was a lot of just talking for the most part. And then it shows that they have abilities at mm. the end. But I mean, I don't know. <coughs> the art was really, the art was good, but I, I, I don't know. I don't think I'll pick up the next one. It's just, it didn't really catch me. I don't really, yeah. I don't know. It, it, and this kind of leads into one of my my issues with the book is that um, I remember Miles Law Comics the first time around. Yes, Matthew, mm-hmm. I'm that old. Um, <laughs> so, as a reimage or a rehash or a restart or a reboot or a rebirth, whatever, um, <sighs> comics have to be accessible to everyone. Do we agree on that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Cool. Now. I get that Spanish is a is a up there in America for um, possibly the most used language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not in England, it isn't. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't even think about that for you guys. And it's it's only because I know a smattering of Spanish and I have uh, friends who speak Spanish that mm-hmm. I know what some of these words mean. On top of that, the editors don't seem to know how they want to present that. Yeah. On one box, they write the Spanish down, and there's a translation box at the bottom of the panel. And mm-hmm. in other panels, they do the traditional in the parenthesis and say in the box translated from. Pick away, for Christ's sakes. Just pick a method and then go with it. Or they don't right? translate it at all. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of – so I get there's a, there's a level of disconnect for me on this book. Um, mm-hmm. The other things I'd say about it is where did the backgrounds go? <laughs> you know, there's some some several panels here where they just sat around and they just walking and or, or whatever. Good to see Rocket, by the way. But here, mm-hmm. this panel here, you can see here they're stood by whatever a, a, a shopping center or a coffee shop or whatever. Where's it gone there? It's just yeah. I agree and... with you, Fred. The war the war elements were absolutely great, and they were colored brilliantly because mm-hmm. they're supposed to be in like a like a desert area type thing. Yeah. Um, they do absolutely. Um, I'm trying to find the panel so to prove my point. Well, if you go um, to like page 19, page. there's there is no background there as at all either. She's just kind of yeah. floating in there. Yeah. So this I mean, yeah, the colors here. It, it's supposed to scream, scream like a desert environment, and the colors absolutely totally do. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw a little flash of the icon wall there. I will say that that's a pretty damn good panel as well. Yeah. So the art wise, the art I think outweighs the story massively. And I agree with you that you can't the, the, the characters aren't different enough yet. You know, yeah. and we've all seen enough sort of like I don't know, squads or we call them over here squaddies, but I guess uh core of cadres of of troops. And we need to you need to work out which one's which or which one's the fun one, which one's the and so on and so forth. Yeah. This doesn't have that yet. It is issue one. So um, I guess the thing would be is if you loved the syndicate the first time around, will you be checking this out again? I don't know. The original guys who were working on it back then aren't working on it now. Part of the intrigue for me for Milestone was the fact it was people like Dennis Cowan. It was uh, 
Dwayne McDuffie that were were working on the books. You know, it was it was those high high caliber car- uh, creators on there. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just, I just, I don't know. It's just, I think there's a disconnect for me. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. Matthew, what do you think? You guys pretty much hit the nail on the head for me uh, for, for the same things. I, I love the artwork for it, um, but the translations kept throwing me off. Just the differences in in their in their selective choices for it. Um, I wasn't really invested in the characters mm-hmm. all that much. Um, I could kind of see what they were going for. You know, the soldier comes back home and everything's different, mm-hmm. but. I don't know. It may have just been because I read this right after reading Jurassic League, and it was just a change of pace. For me. It was just immediate yeah. flip flop. But I wasn't I wasn't attracted to this book like I was for like uh, the Night, which is one of the books that we'll be discussing upcoming, yeah. or the Jurassic League, or any of the books that we've discussed previously. I just wasn't yeah. drawn to it. I don't know. It may just it may just be me. It may just be my, not my cup of tea. Somebody out there could very well pick this up and think, like, wow, this is really good. I relate to this. I hope so. I absolutely totally yeah. hope so. And I don't um, – I'll tell you a quick story. Um, as you know, I go to Mexico when I can for, for vacation time. Mm-hmm. I'm going this year. Thank you. No COVID restrictions. Um, and there's a Walmart where I go and I pop in. I have a look. I've always flipped through the comic books on the rack. And they're all in mm-hmm. Spanish. Absolutely all of them in Spanish, which I expect because I'm in, I'm in Mexico, right? You're in Mexico. Yeah. So, and that doesn't bother me. And it doesn't bother me when things do the little parenthesis or they tell me what the translation is. Mm-hmm. DC are that big that at least digitally, could you not have one that is all Spanish and all, or one that's all English to cater to both markets? No, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Does that not is that not an idea? If you want to engage with people who who don't read a lot of English or speak Spanish and know Spanish um, slang, like bet, I probably pronounced that wrong. Then I don't. I don't actually think that that's uh, Spanish slang per se. Bet in particular, because um, where, where I live, because um, this didn't bother me at all. Because this is just my day to day life. Um, <laughs> in text form um because or it's like over 70 something percent hispanic latino where i live uh-huh. um so uh, the mass majority of everyone is is from those countries and there's a lot of spanish being spoken i go downtown and the signs are in spanish mm-hmm. um so uh, you know it, it doesn't I'm, I'm not like fluent or anything but i know enough to like mm-hmm. know enough <laughs> so like but reading this i'm like ah okay you know it's just like going to school, you know. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but some of the stuff, like some of the slang, I don't, I don't think it's actually like a Spanish slang. It's just kind of, and, and that's what was that was throwing me off because it, they were throwing in like Spanish uh, stuff, like Spanish uh, terminology and whatnot. But then they would go in, they would throw that type of stuff in. I'm like, I don't even like I've heard it before, but it's not. Yeah. I haven't heard it like around from. You know where, where I live, but I hear it like mm. on TV, so it's more like I don't know, like Hollywood type. I, I don't even know where that's from. Like that, yeah. I'm like <laughs> I, I hear that online mostly. Uh, I've never heard it in person before. Um, I know one person who uses it as <laughs> as a as a comment. So mm-hmm. like it's like a good, it's like a yeah, hell yeah type of. You thing. know a person? Yeah. Bet. Yeah. Bet. Yeah. I, I see. I swear to is... God. Why, why, just... do put up, why do I put up with you two on a Sunday? I have absolutely no idea. I have yeah. better things to do with my time. I was just using it. Two. I was just. I was just putting out an example, Johnny. That's all I was doing. Just yeah, I don't. Just an example. So my my whole thing with the writing was just they were mixing like slang terms from different cultures and what, and that's what's, what's throwing me off because I was like, okay, yeah, I understand the Spanish part, but then they say something else. I'm like, I. Yeah, I'm completely lost. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what did what? <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, I agree. It does close off the markets, and I know they're trying to be inclusive with you, you know. And uh, but the U.S. is not the rest of the world, and it, it, you gotta just understand that because, like, uh, you gotta think about like the Asian markets. Like, are mm. they going to be picking up these books and be like, what the what the hell right. are they talking? <laughs> 
because yeah. there's a slang terms over there aren't even remotely close to the ones in the US. So if you have it in their native language, because you're here, still using the slang terms from over here, they're not going to yeah, yeah. understand. And that's when like the translation, they have to change things around to fit the, the culture that or you know, what it's where it's going to like the mm. whole like a snatching wig thing. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, who actually knows what that means, you know, in other cultures. But then again, I'm a weirdo and I watch other cultures, TV shows, but uh, cool. yeah. Uh, so I agree. They, they need to, you know, be open to other markets, but don't, don't, don't be using like, I don't know. I, I can't really, Slang, I mean, Do I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. You it, it's open, hard to explain, you know. Yeah, open up to other markets, but by doing so, don't close your, yourself to other ones. And the yeah, idea right. of, well, the white guy's got plenty you know, of comics you can get into, he doesn't need this one, beats the whole point of inclusion to start with. Inclusion yeah. is for everybody, not this segment can read this and this segment can read that. There you go. But the thing is, if you, the whole, like, they're trying to close it's like the whole world, you know, white people have the whatever comics. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. but you have to understand that if you're trying to close off one group, you may alienate others as well Agreed. in the process. And so that's why with true inclusion, you just, you don't care. You know, you don't try to exclude mm -hmm. one because it, that's besides the, like, that's not even. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally fine. <laughs> All right. Cool. Excellent. Right. Whilst we get uh, ready for the next book, uh, which is my choice, let me go on third for a change. Um, we have one of our adverts. Here's our advert for our sister show, the No Prize Podcast. There you go, the No Prize Podcast as alternate Tuesdays when there's not a, a TDC show. There you go. Talks about everything that's Marvel, DCU, oh, not DCU, no, MCU, sorry, and Disney Plus. I got my letters mixed up there. Oh, dear me. Um, so, of course, you can expect some Doctor Strange love and hate on that show, as well as prepping for the new Obi Wan show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to learn the force so I can just chop uh... my words. <laughs> harder, harder. Uh. <laughs> uh, I'll see myself out. <laughs> okay. I didn't know. Didn't know had it in me. All right. Okay. Next up is my choice, um, which is the new Batgirl's book. Um, so this is issue six. Um, and let's go through some dates. It's written by uh, Becky Cloonan and Michael W. Conrad. Um, art by Jorge. Corona, uh, colors by Sarah Stern, letters are provided uh, by Corona and Stern themselves. Um, I don't know what you guys think about this, but for me, it's this is an odd book. It reads odd, it looks odd. Um, and no way should this work for me. It is not my type of book at all. And yet, there is a charm to it. Uh, it is basically boiled down to the relationship between the girls. You know, that includes Babs, it includes Cass and Steph. Um, mm -hmm. I just think this book has just so much heart that uh, it just makes me smile when I read it. The art is a bit wonky in places. It's not your stereotypical DC book. Um, I think that's a good thing because, you know, we all like a little bit of diversity when it comes to our art. Um, the costumes look great on both Spoiler and Spoiler Batgirl and Batgirl Batgirl. I don't know how to... Mm -hmm. else to kind of describe those um it just works this is the sixth part of this opening arc um it's been been pacey there's been some fun bits um it, honestly i don't know what mark can say it's just a really good fun book that i just look forward to reading every every week sorry every week every month it, there you go Dead easy, dead simple on that one. Freya, what did you think of Batgirls? I imagine the art isn't quite your cup of tea. No, I didn't. I didn't. 
the artwork was uh too distracting for me um like in one cast has like four fingers for some reason and you all have four fingers i'm counting the thumb, thumb finger. johnny the, the thumb counting the thumb johnny it's got a, it's, it's got a third joint hand. it's got a third joint one two three uh, where's geez. the third joint right here in the palm that is part what? of your thumb that is the only joint in your hand that is dedicated to this digit. One, so two, one, two, three. Right. So how many joints what, do you think? Do you guys do you guys three. only count? One, two, three. One, two, three. Do you guys so only say two, one, two, the three. British people only have four fingers? That's nice yes. to know. <laughs> Very nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> why why else would you call it a thumb? Because it's not a finger. Okay, okay. whatever. It's still a digit. It's still, it's still a, a phalange. Oh. Yeah, exactly. It is a Did, phalange. But you didn't say she only has four phalanges. Whatever, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> really? Sounds like you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't like the artwork all that much. It was too, uh, like I said, distracting. The limbs would get like skinny and elongated looking, and then mm -hmm. it's just, uh, I don't like it when it goes like that. Um, it, it's just like I said, it's just too distracting. It gives me like freaking um, what's that guy's name? Uh, like the the guy who created like Invader Zim and oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. like and uh, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Who, yeah. Um, what is it Johan Vasquez or something? I can't remember his name. But anyway, it, it just kind of reminds me of his art style. But with that art style, it it makes more sense, and for some reason, it's cleaner. This one, it just it looks sloppy to me, in my opinion. Okay. You don't have to agree with me. You know, That's opinions fine. are opinions, but um, yeah. right noses, we all have them. Yeah, everyone has an opinion. There's no such thing as a wrong or right opinion. I Agreed. mean, um, but yeah, I I mean, I like the story. Um, uh -huh. I like the story overall. Um, but like I said, I just didn't. The artwork was too distracting for me. Uh, the colors were once again nice, very nice colors. <laughs> very nice very nice colors um some i don't know about the wording i don't know okay. some places it was a bit much and then others i was fine with it but it, i will say this because mm -hmm. i will as much as i love this book just to back up what you're saying <coughs> on this player, um mm -hmm. my read pile for fun is somewhat extravagant at the moment and when bat girl six was we were looking at six i was like i better just double check that i've read four and five and i hadn't so i had to read four and five to bring up me up to speed um they're in my collection over there um when i started reading this one i was like man there is a lot of words in this book it, <laughs> it is a it is a dialogue heavy book uh -huh. compared to some of the other stuff we see um mm -hmm. and for the art i think it reminds me art styles kind of like a, a like do you remember those kind of off the wall cartoon shows that have become so prevalent nowadays instead of like smooth lines it's like you see them like oh like things like invader zim yeah and um what's the house of imaginary monsters what's that one uh, uh, foster's oh, house of imaginary oh, friends yeah. there you go there you go that's Fosters, it that, yeah. like, that kind of that kind of off the wall kooky style of animation that yeah. i think kind of reminds me this book reminds me of that and i hate that that show so you know i'm surprised <laughs> it is, but, but there you go cool matthew back your uh, fan kind of like kind of like you johnny um there are some parts where i just felt like it shouldn't work but it did mm -hmm. uh, i i enjoyed it it was a good read it was a good mm -hmm. read um it wasn't it wasn't something that i checked out halfway through uh, there were some parts like it is it is wordy there were some parts where i skimmed through instead of actually just reading through mm -hmm. uh, especially since this is issue six i'm not caught up i haven't read the others so there's a lot of information that i'm probably missing uh, mm -hmm. I, I do like the idea that the villain uh uses fear toxin in mm -hmm. his paintings yeah uh, i i did like that concept because as we've seen the fear toxin used in every other situation is just an aerosol just sprayed in their face yeah. and it activates the part of the brain that they start seeing illusions start uh going through start uh 
they they start being afraid. I'm trying to think of a big fancy word to use, and it's just not coming to me. I would uh, say scared. <laughs> <laughs> Terrify is a nice word. Terrifies them. Yeah. Illicit. Illicit was the word I was looking for. Oh, where illicit. Your in illicits fe a fear state uh, within ah. the person. Uh, uh, look at it being all scientific. Being, I know, yeah. but the fact that the, he's using it as a mixture in his paintings, I I, I really like the concept. That's that's what hooked me into this when I when I read through it and I was like, oh, he's using this as paintings. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see how this works. And uh, yeah, I liked it. I did like the little babble uh, going on between the girls. Uh, I was I so this scene right here. I did full. I was fully convinced that uh, um, spoiler had died. I was fully you know convinced what? she had drove off and kaboom. And then Me the next too. scene, they're all like, <laughs> "Yeah, I was absolutely. I was. I was convinced. I was like, no, the cat because we all know how much I love Steph. No, mm -hmm. and, but no one uh, really dies in these comics. Come on now." Yeah. And then in the next panel, she's like, what's the problem? What's, what's up? the problem? <laughs> what's up? And you're like, oh, they're talking about the car. If you, read it, if you read it in order, you kind of like, the, 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 the trying to hint that it's still at least halfway through the, the page, they're trying to imply that she's still gone. But it's yeah. the, the car that they're upset for. I thought, I, and I think, you know, it's very much like what you said about the Jurassic book. Sometimes, because we've read so many comic books, um, it is hard for to pull the wool over our eyes when we read stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes every time you go into a book, you've got to sort of like press your reset button to allow yourself to be surprised. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh, can I just point out artwork issue that I have the biggest issue with on page 18? What was it, 18 or 19 where she's in the car? <laughs> is it the chin, is it the double chin she has? You mean the butt chin that she has going on for some reason, though? Yeah. All of a sudden? yeah. And the crazy eyes and how she looks like she's 45. Yeah. Or 55, hey. I should say. There's some good looking 45 year olds. Well, 55. There's, so, there's some good looking 50 year olds, I'll have you know. <laughs> okay, but. Look, we are saying they're not. We don't, we're not saying there just, aren't any. <laughs> yeah, there's always some good looking people. I know a guy who's almost 70. He looks like he's in his 40s. So, you know, anyway, but uh, the artwork. It's not me, just... in, case, in case anybody wants to write no. me. No, it's not me. <laughs> oh, I didn't jump in on that one. I didn't jump in. <laughs> uh... But, yeah. No, and the, the painting thing, it just kind of reminded me of a video game a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Sure, like the Layers of Fear video game. Where he's, like, using human blood and stuff to in his paint. Anyway, but, yeah, interesting. It was interesting. They should come up with more interesting ways to use fear toxins and stuff. Yes. Mm. Like put in energy drinks or cookies or <laughs> put it in that's, energy that's, drinks. That's one way to, you know. <laughs> drink, go to drink a monster and you're seeing the monster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um right. <laughs> okay. Hilarious. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, we could always quote oh, Batman man. begins and say it doesn't matter if it's in the water supply, it's an air, it's airborne. It has to be air, so but, it has uh, to be, but you know, it is yeah. what it is. I just thought it was really funny. I don't know, I'm just quoting, I'm just quoting back my <laughs> head. No, that's what I'm saying. All right, okay. So, next up is Matthew's choice. Um, yes. Matthew has gone for this bad boy of a book. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say right now quickly how much I absolutely love this book. So, this is a great choice, Matthew. Well done. Um, it's written by Chip. Yes, I'm writing Batman and Daredevil at the same time, Zadarsky. Um, art by Carmine D. Gian Domenico. Yeah, see, I got it down. Practiced. Colour by even oh here we go, Francincia. And letters didn't by practice Pat, that one. <laughs> I did not. Pat Prosayal. There you go. Cool. Uh, this is for those who are looking at it and say, what's this number one? This is the compendium edition. This mm -hmm. features the first three issues of batman the night remember this is a 12 issue maxi series so if you've missed out a couple of issues uh this is a great place to get your fix matthew mm -hmm. what do you think of this uh so fun fact when i first picked this up i totally missed the fact that it was the compendium edition totally just skipped over that little text right there and so uh -huh. i was like man this is a long book 
What's going on? <laughs> it's like, I didn't expect it to be like 50 oh, some odd God. pages. <laughs> oh but, my God. <laughs> but but once once I got like halfway through the second, it clicked. I was like, oh, that's that's what's going on. Okay. But uh yeah, absolutely loved love this from the artwork to the story. I especially love how they focused how this whole thing is focused on how Bruce is coping with the loss of his parents and it focuses on how he goes out and starts training, mm -hmm. how he leaves and starts training to become uh, Batman as, and as they said in the book, acquiring his pieces of armor. Uh, yeah. So I, I really absolutely amazing book. We see, you know, Bruce start out as, you know, in, as a schoolboy. he's getting into fights uh, he has a lot of rage and anger that he's just not handling very well. And so Alfred uh, is like, okay, so this is what your parents did. Uh, they filled up this library with knowledge and ways to learn themselves, to be able to teach themselves uh, ways to make better choices. And I've stripped all of it down and we're going to start afresh. We're going to start new. Uh, filling it with ways to help you become better filling it with ways for you to teach yourself and educate yourself on how to be a better person and so that's what they do and he starts filling it with books on like martial arts uh how to fight uh different things along that nature um i also really love the fact that we see hugo strange in this yeah that's good yeah show. hugo Absolutely. He that is a character that I've actually been thinking about lately that we have not seen in a long while. Yeah. We have not seen Hugo in a while. And we should so have him in the next Batman movie. Yes, I would love that. Absolutely love that. Because I remember I remember seeing him um in like the old animated series. Yeah. Uh, and so And Gotham. He's in Gotham later on. He is by in play, Gotham. played by BD Wong. Mm -hmm. But um in the old animated series, he always, he always just made me feel uncomfortable, and I, that always stuck with me. When when you say old animated series, which one? Uh, it was, um, I think it was just Batman the animated series. The, the original Batman the animated series. The original. Mm -hmm. um, and so the fact that he's included in this as kind of as the main character because he's he's Bruce's therapist that is talking through him. Uh, talking to him, sorry, throughout this whole book, and mm -hmm. it's it's very cool to see him included in this, and I absolutely love it. But we see we see Bruce going uh, from young man. He's talking to his girlfriend, which was um, a lady that we actually saw in a previous book that we discussed about Dana, uh, who is the who is if I remember correctly, she's a judge now. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. So. And so seeing her in a recent uh, book, I think it was actually last week's book, where like, it was Detective Comics. It was Detective Comics from, yeah. the, last, from the last episode. She was in it. So seeing her here, seeing their relationship kind of be what it is and what it was, was really cool. Um, and then we see like in the second issue, and this is, this is where it threw me off, right? Because there was a small change in artistic style when Bruce went from the first book to the second book. And so that's when it, that's, that's what threw me off. I was like, Oh, maybe this is the collection of different books. And then I went back like, Oh, compendium magician. Okay. Uh, and so we see Bruce leave the Americas, leave Gotham and go to France in pursuit oh. of a serial killer. But then he meets a master thief. Cat burglar. A cat burglar who is not Catwoman. Hey. Uh, she's About known time. as the Grey Shadow. She's known as the Grey Shadow. Uh, just a um, middle-aged woman who pretty hot, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my god. <laughs> look, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> look, I'm, uh, Oh, and the artwork here with the whole uh, fist fight, fight, fight yeah. thing. Oh, absolutely amazing. I just, this, there's so many things about this book. And the fact that it's three issues, there's a lot to go over. There yeah. is a whole lot to discuss. But I, I think I'll just sum it up with 
artwork was really well done. Uh -huh. uh, the the characters, the way the storyline is driven, and how everybody interacts with each other is very well done. Um, even even the wordings and the the small little asides like that we see uh -huh. like little torn pages with that's meant to be Bruce's like inner thoughts. Mm -hmm. just reflects so much on this character and there's more to bruce that we see here now as the young man that we do and a lot of the most recent comics was just i'm batman this is batman. bruce becoming the knight yeah so it's yeah let it's, me ask you a question it's so good. let me ask you a quick question you're right it is so good um which characters do you think appears in this that appears in detective comics because it's detective 1059 is the one we last looked at Dana? That wasn't Dana the judge? That's Caroline. Carol. Okay. Oh, then then yeah. never mind. Then never mind. I, I, I remember, I, okay. I there remember. is a D. There is a D. You're absolutely right. There is a D. Deb Donovan is the newspaper. Um that's that's author. who it was. So you, you you mixed your D's up on that one. Yeah. And then Caroline Donovan's the daughter that's the judge. Got it, got it. So I apologize for my my <laughs> My but it would be cool. You're absolutely right. It would be cool. It would have been really cool. Yeah, I, and I think they did something very similar in the Dark Knight book, which was written by David Finch. They went back and retroactively added um, yep. a love interest uh, for Batman. As, I just uh, for Bruce the, the thing. So that, no, I just saw the characters. I saw the characters yeah. like they're both redheads with this length hair. I was like. Not Grand every Hunter. redhead is Barbara Gordon <laughs> or Mary. <Jane>. Look, okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, they are the only two redheads they? that exist in comic book dub. Mary Jane and Barbara. <laughs> Ray, what, what Jean Grey think? doesn't exist? Isn't she a redhead? No. I was just no going she for doesn't the, exist. I was just going for You're the show. Right. Just going for the show. All right, okay. So, Freya, what did you think of this book? I liked it. Um, I was uh, trying to figure out why it was so long at first, and I went, oh. <laughs> It's three. So she, she and I did kind of the same thing. I was like, ah, it's three books. That's why it's a hundred pages. I get it. So you could argue we've, we've reviewed six books all together today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I liked it. I, I like this version of like telling Bruce's backstory and his like mm. training and stuff. Um, not gonna lie, I was hoping for a Tally Al Ghul situation coming up with him. Twelve, 12 issues, old lady. Training with the League of Shadows. I just want more Tally Al Ghul. She has been pushed into the shadows for too long. Well, didn't well, she's she's in the didn't, well, 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 in the Shadow <laughs> War at the moment, doesn't Batman 120 or 121 end with her and Bats getting it smoochy? Okay, well. I think need, it does. Need, yeah. okay, well, she has made an appearance again, so I need her relationship with Bruce or just her being around more. Um, and we may see it. I'm so sick of Catwoman. Just, I'm done. Just stop. Well, one issue to go. One issue to go. June twenty eighth. <laughs> Batman versus Catwoman. Uh, Batman Catwoman book number twelve will ship. Might be late. Who knows? Um, I will say this though, Frey, you're absolutely right. More happens in this book for Bruce than has happened in eleven issues of Batman Catwoman. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I liked it. I like how he makes a move on her. Um, yeah, I, I, the yes. shadow. She's like, yeah, you're too young for me, kid. <laughs> <laughs> really she, she's like, she was like, oh, if only I could steal years. <laughs> if only I was a younger man. Yeah, but like, yeah, it, it was a, it was a good book. I enjoyed it. Um, it was fun, interesting. Yeah, here's a fun fact. Oh, sorry, it's ten issues, not twelve issues. I misspoke. Oh, well. All right, okay. So, here's a fun little thing for you to consider. Justice, mm -hmm. the Jurassic League number one is recommended at 13 plus. So's this. It's because we get to see uh, people in their underwear. Oh, Leg gasp. Can I also make Le a comment? <clears throat> Leg gasp. But, um, and it matches because it's French. I know. I was just going to say I appreciate <laughs> that even though, even though they're in France. And obviously, they should be speaking French. That they're not throwing French they, slang terms at us. <laughs> they're doing the in, proper thing in with French. The, yeah. Because the <laughs> oh, there like, were a couple of there were there were a couple moments that I will admit, but it was it, they were they were very few, and they yeah. matched well with the pacing that you could use context clues to assume what they meant, 
and yeah. it just it just went well. That's you know what that's a really good shout, Matthew, because I think that's probably the knock on the Blood Syndicate book is that we don't because I don't speak fluent Spanish or which street Spanish or whatever version mm -hmm. Spanish you, you used in Slang. the book to to get the slang across because I can't work out rightly out what's going on. It doesn't help me interpret what's what's being said. This is a really yeah. great point. Well done. And then this book's so emotive with the art that fair enough if there is a French slang in there and you don't know what it is, you can pretty much work yeah. out what he means. Mm -hmm. yeah, means. And, so but good the, shout. Good the shout. problem with the syndicate also was that they were sitting at a coffee shop, so you couldn't even use context clues because they were just sitting talking. There was right, literally yeah. nothing going on. And that's why I was like, well, this, yeah, you can you can figure it out just by what's going on in the mm. it's in the situation. It's one of those like show don't tell but there's actually mm -hmm. something to show so you can actually you know pick up on it but yeah but still it wasn't like they were using it every single page you know or every single you know bubble mm. or you know like i don't right. i don't understand <laughs> i don't know french like uh like what was i what was i doing oh like we were playing like a sherlock holmes game my because my mom and i do that might we like doing murder mystery things but it's so British that we're like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> so, so we have and to go through. And you didn't think, you didn't think to text me, to ask me? Uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like the so, phrase you taught, like Johnny used to taught me a phrase like a couple weeks ago. It's like, what was it? Titty boo or something? Tickety boo. Tickety boo. That, yeah, that one. Tickety boo. Tickety boo. Yeah. So All right. it, <laughs> I'll, I'll, don't worry, I'll teach you in Georgia as well. All right, so yeah. I love this book. It reminds me Legends of the Dark Knight. Do you remember that book, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. Batman's early years? Man, yeah. what a good book that was, especially the early, the early issues. This just screams that. And as much as you get, you know, the 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 way he handles the bully in the first issue, which is very clever, you get the love interest, not love interest in the second book. The third book, you get the serial killer, and oh my god, what's happening with the teeth? And then it ends with this, with Alfred mm -hmm. listening to the voice message over and over. And Which the that heart, is the heart, heart. I say about the Batgirl book, but this is the heart of this book. It's the relationship between Bruce and Alfred, and how mm -hmm. Bruce has to make his own way, but he's trying so hard not to let Alfred down. And we yeah. all know he is because Alfred wants him to have a good, healthy life, and Bruce is going to end up getting. Uh, Carl becoming up. Batman, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you know, Alfred's going to stick by him. To the it also so, yeah. kind of it kind of is just like a parent parental, even though I don't have kids, I'm around mm -hmm. people who do. It's the same thing like parental, you want your kids mm -hmm. like the best for your kids, and you want them to make the best decisions and whatnot. But at the end of the day, their decisions are their own, mm -hmm. and all you can really do is just try to be there for them as best you can. You know? One of the reasons and that doesn't the... mean like if your kid becomes a serial killer, you don't turn them in because that's yeah. no. that's yeah. the don't opposite that. of good parenting. That's, yeah, don't do that. yeah. Right. <laughs> on the yeah. back of this book with a bit of the compendium, you get a teaser for Batman 125. This is mm -hmm. going to be where Chips of Dasky takes on the book uh and go moving forward. Um gotta say it looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, it does look very well done. Um, I am absolutely all over that, like a rash. It is going to be <laughs> like a rash. Yeah. Do you guys um, not have that over there? No. <laughs> oh, we do. It, we do. It's just. Oh, sorry. I'll be all over that, like crazy. like creases in a cheap suit. How's that? There thing? you go. Yeah. I like that one. I'll be in there like swimwear. <laughs> I, I I get what you're saying. I'm I'm smelling what you're stepping in. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. I got it. <laughs> I got you. You guys are weird. Um, <laughs> Never heard any of this crap. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll, I can translate it anytime you like. Just say. All right. <laughs> okay. Right. Oh, there you go. Listen. They're a wonder. <laughs> yeah. Amazing that it's also in the same language practically. All right. So there you go. We <laughs> we are down um, through six books, if you want to count them that way. Six books. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'll use I'll my count them. thumbs it makes to help. It count. makes it seem more impressive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so all that's left for me to say really is thank you Matthew and thank you Freya for hanging out, really appreciate it yes I love it, I love it. Uh, I love don't forget it. to check out <laughs> <laughs> do not forget to check the UCPM for all your favourite shows including 
the No Price Podcast, and of course, the Old Timers Comic Book Show. Matthew? The Jank Think Tank, where we discuss Magic the Gathering, whether it be cards, combos, or deck decks, and we're trying to get the next episode planned. We've been, it's been a while since we, since we've recorded, but Josh and I are trying to figure something out. I know he's been cool. busy, I've been busy, so we're working on it. Yeah, cool. And if you have uh, any Jank Think Tank um, musings, you can always go back and check out the earlier episodes. Yes. As you yep. can with uh, Co- uh, K-Pop Cosmo. Yeah, yeah, so actually with that, um, during the summer, I was actually having a, planning on having a comeback show. I just need to go yeah. talk to talk to maybe Tracy and, you know, Mark. Okay. So. Cool. Excellent. So, yeah. There you go. If you get stuck, I'll always be on it. Some people say I don't know anything about comic books, so, you know, what the hell, right? I can I can choose a girl group for you, Johnny, and you can just say, you talk about how attractive they are. <laughs> yes, I am. I, scheduled me for that one. Yes. It's okay. like, got it. Have on it. the list now. Yeah, yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right. Okay, I've been your host, Joining the Machine Hughes, and as always, adios. Bye. See you next time.